Organized Sound Podcast. Welcome back. I have a very special guest with me today. It's Kai Cash. Yeah. We're here, Central Park. <laughs> Central we're chilling. New York, New York. It's kind of like a gloomy day, but we're chilling. It's very, very gloomy, but I never did an interview, uh, a walking gloomy interview. This is a vibe. All right, this is your first. It's my first time. Let me, let me get on this side over here. This is, this is about to be fun. I'm I'm excited for it. So so tell me about some of your early musical influences and how you were able to like find your sound through that. Um, my biggest musical influence it would have to be my mom because she used to play all the waviest everything like her playlists. Even though it wasn't called a playlist back in the day because it was all CDs, but her selection was so broad. I used to hear gospel music, jazz music, hip hop, R and B regular soul music it was so much and i used to really just gravitate to it all but beyond my mom it was also my dad because he, he used to bring me around a lot of great great people like i got the chance to be in in great spaces you know like i grew up around little kim and junior mafia and stuff like that so i was able to see so many great things actually me and my dad just had a conversation probably like two weeks ago where he was asking me if i remembered when I was on this in the studio with Jay Z and Timberland, oh I was shoot, like three years old. <laughs> and the what's your answer to that? Is, I don't remember that session, but we had a um, they had a video shoot for this song called Hot Boys, and I was there, but I was I probably was like four, but mm. I remember that video shoot vividly. Like it was such a great moment. But um, and as far as artists, my influences were Jay Z, Biggie, Mace. Mary J. Blige. That's those are my biggest influences. I like that. So, um, my next question is, what you got going now? You got the team together. Yes. Yeah, uh, Cyn. So, tell me about who's in Cyn and like what what y'all stand for. Uh, Cyn consists of seven artists, I believe, and the president. The president is my guy V. The artists, myself, Nico Brim, King Combs, Shaq and Living, K Wells and Dame. Dame, we all grew up together. All of our fathers were friends, so they always had us together. When we were, since we were younger, like every summer we would spend the summers together. And then um, one summer we were just like, yo, we should just start a group or something. Start a little clique. You know when you were, you're a young kid, you start a little group. And we just decided to see why you would be the group and see why actually stands for Create Your Now, which means like whatever your moment is, go out there and create it. Like, can't nobody stop you but yourself. And um, we're all musically inclined. A lot of us are business savvy. A lot of us came up playing sports and stuff like that, but we transitioned to music. So it's real, it's real, it's real dope. We have a lot of great things coming as well. But that's really the whole Oh, we're definitely going to get into that, but I want to talk about what's already out. Mm -hmm. The West is this probably my favorite song from y'all. Thank you, thank you. That's um, classic. Talk to me about just how you put that together and how it was able to be so successful. Um, in all honesty, the West came about, I had just finished college and I flew into LA and they had lost my bag at the airport. So I was upset, but I had a studio session for eight hours that night. So from the, from the airport, I went to my dad's crib. I got dressed, whatever clothes I had there, and I went straight to the studio for eight hours. And it was just me and V at the time. Like the last 20 minutes of the session, we played the beat for the West that was produced by uh, this guy from Philly named Arya. And we were just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So we just started coming up with little melodies. And the flow of my verse on the West was actually the first melody that we came up with. And then I just went in there and I just started laying my verse down. So after I laid the verse down, we was just like, yo, this is, this is one of those hits. Like, so the next day I actually linked up with Christian King Combs. And we linked up with Chris Brown because we he had a uh, it was a, like a event that we went to, pretty little things event, mm. and we were chilling at his house and I ended up playing the song. I, I played a bunch of music for them, and when I played the West, everybody just started going crazy. So I was like, Nah, this is definitely the one. And then Christian was just like, Yo, I'm getting on this tomorrow, like, ASAP. So the next day, we we usually go to the studio every day, but the next day, like he was like, Yo, pull up that record, like we need to do that record right now. So I pulled it up. He did his verse. We made a few calls. We got the word out to O3 Greedo. Actually, we got the word out to O3 Greedo through social media. So we was like playing his, his music and our stories and stuff like that. And we was just talking to him via DM. And we was just like, yo, we got this song. We want you to come. We want you to come and just lay something down to. So he came 
by himself, Dolo, like, again, the super, super level of respect for him because when you don't know somebody, you never go to anybody's session by yourself. But he pulled up. He was like, yo, I'm about to go, I'm about to go down. I'm, I'm, I'm about to go to jail, like, for a long time. So I'm just pulling up on everybody. He came, he laid his eight. We made his eight the hook. The rest is history. And we just went into the clubs. We started servicing the records, giving them to the DJs. All the people that we had around us, the influencers and stuff like that, our friends, they, they also helped us make the song pop. And then it was just so genuine. Like it happened organically and by itself. Like nothing was forced. Didn't have no payola, no none of that. Like the song was just such a great song. And when product is great, it's going to speak for itself. So that's my most successful song to date. But I got some. Got some, some stuff coming. Got some well, we also got your producer here with yeah, us, my guy. Trinity Black. Black. My guy. No. You know? So, talk about the relationship that you guys have and how you even linked up in the first place. So, basically, it's another social media link up. Social media is a very powerful tool right now. Thanks. One day, I actually had a beat, and me and my guy K Wells was another artist on CYN. We did this beat be called Gelato. And we came up with this song called For Free where we go back and forth. It was a super dope, super dope record. And I was just like, yo, who made this beat? Cause this beat is just like, it's phenomenal. So we reached out, right? <laughs> we reached out to the email address. So I happened to be Trinity Black. We reached out to him, I'm like, yo, we did this beat. Whatever we need to get to you to do this, let's get it done. So he was like, all right, bet. Watch out for the puddle behind. He was like, he was like, I right, bet we're gonna make it happen. So we made it happen. Search. I got the chance to link up with Trinity over the phone because I was in Georgia and he was all the way in Mass. Yeah. And um, from there, we just garnished the relationship. We started speaking more. He started sending me more beats. We started beats. working on more products. So besides that song, I have a couple of other joints that I worked on, but the next, the next Trinity project that I have coming out is actually a song called Trinity. And it's on my, um, my upcoming, my upcoming EP called 7-Eleven, which should be dropping like top of 2021. But fire, got some heat, man. So be on the lookout for that. Facts, definitely be on the lookout. New music a coming. Lot of good music yeah. coming. Fire All right. Music. So uh, Trini, from your end, how was? The, how did you like discover Kai Cash on the internet and decide? All right, this is a dude I'm rocking with, and let me send him something, and hopefully it works out. All right. So it wasn't the worst. Uh -huh. well, it wasn't it wasn't the West for me, so it was actually um it was thirty, and I think you had like your Instagram and in and a bio and shit, and I, I just remember bumping, and I was like, from there, I was just listening to like like all of your shit, and uh -huh. then fucking, then then I, I reached out, got um got your email and shit. Yeah. That beat I actually made on my boys TV and shit. I wasn't living in my crib. I, like oh, at the wow. time I wasn't for me. I didn't have a, a crib at the time, so I was making beats on my boys TV and shit. That's fine. And fucking um, yeah, bro. The rest was history. The Tracks, rest is history. You know what I'm saying, nice. but after after that shit, I found out about the West. I'm like, where? <laughs> Let go. Tough so, a question for both of you. Uh, we'll start with Trinity. But what what are some of the goals for like long term? What do you what do you really want to do with this music? Um, it's 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 the production for me. Like it's the engineering. All of that shit. Um, I just want to make good music, great music and shit. Like, I grew up listening to a lot of Kanye. Like, I'm just trying to make some some next level, top tier music. Facts. How me, about for you? Music has always been a passion for me, so I'm just here to like inspire everybody through my music. I want to get my messages across. I want to be able to really help people get through whatever times they are going through at the time, because that's what music is for. So it's a form of art. That's expressive. It's supposed to be there to help people get through certain things, to help people memorize certain things. It's, it's a soundtrack to everybody's life. So I really want my music to be a soundtrack to the masses. Like I need everybody to be tuned in with my music and make it a soundtrack to their lives. No matter what song it is, no matter what moment it is, no matter what emotions you have when you're listening to, to my music, I want to have a song that resonates with everyone and everything. So that's really what my long-term goals is. It's not really, not really about the accolades, not really about the Grammys. Of course, that's things that we desire, but it's like, that's not really what I make music for. I make music for people, really. 
That's dope. And that's a dope place to end it. I appreciate you for coming out. Yes, sir. Thank you Organized man. Sound Podcast. Thanks. We have Trinity Black and Kai Cash. Yeah. And we'll catch you in the next one. Yes,